At this point, you've learned how to create a basic Flutter project and added some code to draw a simple user interface onto the screen. And you've seen that Flutter apps are composed of widgets. It's time to take a deeper look at the Dart code you're writing. And to do so, it's important to understand some programming theory of how this all works. In this episode, you'll learn about three key concepts of object-oriented programming, objects, data, and methods. Then we'll take a deeper look at the Dart code you've been writing and how it relates to object-oriented programming. If you're already familiar with object-oriented programming and feel comfortable with the Dart code you've seen so far, at least from a high-level point of view, feel free to skip this episode. Dart is an object-oriented programming language, which means that most of the code you'll write involves objects of some kind. A mobile app, whether written in Swift for iOS, Kotlin for Android, or Dart for Flutter, is essentially made up of objects that can communicate with each other. Many of the objects in a Flutter app are provided by the Flutter framework. For example, the flat button or text objects that are in your app already. Later on, you'll find that sometimes you'll have to program some objects yourself. But what is an object exactly? Programmers like to group related functionality into objects, each of which has a particular job. For example, you might have an object whose job is to parse a file, another whose job is to authenticate the user, and another one whose job is to perform a difficult calculation. Each object takes care of a specific part of the program. In a full-blown app, you'll have many different types of objects, tens or even hundreds. Even your small starter app already contains several different objects. The object you've spent the most time with so far is Game Page, which you can think of as the main screen of your app. The Hit Me button is also an object, as is the Welcome to My First App text widget. In fact, even the text value that you put on the button, Hit Me, is also an object. Keep in mind that in Flutter, most of the objects you work with are types of widgets. You can kind of use the terms interchangeably in Flutter, but in object-oriented programming, an object really means an instance of a class, whereas a widget is a Flutter-specific term for user interface objects. An object can have both data and functionality. For example, consider the Hit Me button in your app. First, it has some data, such as the widget to display inside, its position on the screen, its width and height, and so on. Second, it has some functionality, such as the ability to recognize when the user presses on it, highlight itself when pressed, and trigger an action in response. The thing that provides functionality to an object is commonly called a method. Other programming languages may call this a procedure, or a subroutine, or a function. A method is simply a function that belongs to an object. Each class has a special method associated with it called a constructor. A constructor is what you use to create an object instance. If you have an object, you call a method on it by appending a dot and the method name and enclosing any arguments you need to send to the method in parentheses. The arguments can have their associated names as prefixes, like font weight and color shown here in a constructor example. To call a constructor method, you use the name of the class you are trying to create an object of, say text style, and then pass in arguments to the constructor in parentheses. The concept of methods may still feel a little bit weird to you, so let's take a look at an example. You, or at least an object named you, wants to throw a party. You clean your room and put on some music, but you forgot to buy some cookies. Fortunately, you've invited the object named Steve who happens to live next door to a convenience store. So you call a method on Steve, asking him to bring you some cookies. The computer now switches to the object Steve and executes the commands from his buy cookies method, one by one from top to bottom. When the buy cookies method is done, the computer returns to your throw party method and continues with that. So you and your friends can eat the cookies that Steve brought back with him. The Steve object also has data. Before he goes to the store, he has money. At the store, he exchanges this money data for other, much more important data, cookies. After making that transaction, he brings the cookies back over to the party and you add them to your drink and snack table. If he eats the cookies along the way, well, your program has a bug. Another important concept when working with methods 
is that you'll often need to change their default behavior by doing what is called an override. You've seen a few examples already of overriding the build method of a widget, which tells the widget how to draw on the screen. You don't call the build method yourself. Flutter calls it for you when it renders widgets to the screen. You just need to provide an override to tell Flutter what to do. The most important thing to remember from this lecture is that objects contain two things. First, data, like the money to buy cookies with. And second, methods, like the steps involved in buying cookies. Objects can look at each other's data. Well, to some extent at least. After all, Steve may not approve if you peek inside his wallet. Asking objects to perform their methods is how you get your app to do things. Wow, that was a lot to cover. Don't worry if you don't get everything right away, or if you have trouble understanding some of the syntax. There's a lot of concepts here that may be brand new to you. We'll review these concepts again and again throughout this course and the rest of the courses in our learning path until they feel like second nature. Again, it's all about learning via repetition.